I'm going to go over some of the tools that you're going to need in order to put on this decal. So anyway, this is a straight bladed cuticle nipper. This is a model 170 wire cutting shears. Do not, don't use these ones that are curved. Use straight bladed ones instead. And then next is some kind of bladed tool. So that's it. Nippers, a blade. In your kit, you will have a sheet that has the decal of the front plate and then also some extras and a sheet of transfer tape, which is reusable a bunch of times. If you need to weed it, uh, you'll be lifting this up and rip it. I've added some little slits here to make it easier to take it off. What you can do is save this afterwards and do something fun with it, making stencils or things like that. Here we are, there's the sheet. So you have a sheet of decal and you have a transfer sheet. You're gonna take this transfer sheet and take the backing paper off of it. Save the backing paper because you're gonna need it later. So the reason for this transfer paper is so that you don't have to touch the decal as you're putting it on. Decal can retain its like maximum permanent stickiness. And also the other reason is that it makes it a lot easier to see what you're doing. As long as you have a handle, handle to move and maneuver the decal. So what I did just there just then was I laid it down lightly on top and then I like burnished it along just to the decal part. And you're gonna lift off and take the decal with it. The decal tends to need a little bit of help to start. Take your bladed tool and run the edge and pop it off so that you can press it against that transfer paper or transfer film without touching it with your hand. And then lift that off. Now you're gonna peel this up along this circle. If one of these little bonus cutouts comes off with it, no worries. You just leave it there. Just try not to touch the back of the bonus part if you plan to use it on something. So now you have this situation here. Don't touch this part. This is the permanent adhesive that you need to stay on the flow mask. Just touch this part as much as you want. And take a look at this bottom logo. This is the reason why we have these uh, three darts here. Is we're using this printed part as a way to locate how far left or right to start this. Line these darts along flow mask. And the idea is that the M is where you center it. The little point of the M. Lay that sucker down, turn it. You're gonna hold it and very lightly. You don't have to uh, burnish those uh, darts down because you're just using it as a positioning device. I'm gonna take a look. You, you want this foil part to only be sticking to this, the straight side of this flow mask because it doesn't really conform around corners too well. When you look at it from the back, you might have some exposed shiny part there, which would then collect dust. I'm gonna try to position it a little further down so you can rip it right back off. Centering and recentering takes a bunch of time. Probably the most time consuming part. All right. Yeah, I think that this is, this is looking a lot better. So don't, uh, don't put too much pressure here yet. Okay, it's a little bit skewed with the right size, a little bit far up, lift it up touching only the transfer film and then bring it down. All right, now I'm gonna maintain consistency of this top seam hemline along the inside edge of this mask cover. I'm gonna go from this center here that I'm touching all the way out, little by little. And we're gonna only concentrate on this side for now and do the other side later. This little section here, where there's an acute part of the curve, I cut a little extra to give people 
a little bit extra space to work with. So there may be a little bit extra, like by a half a millimeter on this side or, or the other. So I'm keeping tension on this hand and then patting it down gradually as I go on this side. Going around, swinging around to the top. And if this other side has laid down, don't worry, rip it right back off. You don't belong there yet. Keep going, keep tension on your opposite hand to pull this taut. And keep that inside edge here consistent and then lay it down. Now you're done with this side. Watch for bubbles. If you see bubbles forming, rip it right back up and lay it down again. Um, now we're getting towards the top, so uh, you, can, you don't really need this other side holding anymore. It's done its job. You can lift it right back up. And now you can match inspect the whole thing. Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, burnish that sucker down because we're going to clip this off. So find your weapon of choice. Yeah, okay. We're done. You got a brand new sparkly look to your flow mask. You can also take transfer tape lay it right back down on top of the, the other cutouts that you want to use and you can do the same thing you burnish it down take a blade and uh, or something and help you lift off the edge to press it to the transfer tape then you can position it where you want on the mask or on something else you know you can make other things match your mask so an example of what that would look like would be like this so you can have a lot of different options for how you want to do this. Congrats on your new sparkly mask, and I hope that it helps you gain a lot of really fun and awesome adventures.